any make, any model, any time. So no matter what you drive or how long you drive it, with a complete flush and fill, we guarantee it for life. Peak Global Lifetime Antifreeze. Flush it, fill it, and forget it. Oh, and Wilson. Archangel is down, and I am on the run. Gene Hackman. The American people want their pilot back. Behind enemy lines. CBS Tonight. CBS Tomorrow, it's the party of the year. But when Deborah invites Ray's arch enemy, ah! it'll be a night to remember. Doesn't Deborah know that you hate her? Of course. Gotta love Deborah. A new Raymond. Then a beautiful woman pits brother against brother. Don't you have enough women? Two and a half men. No. A new episode following Raymond. CBS Tomorrow. Picture comes into focus. Week 17 of NFL prime time in the AFC. It's simple. The Jets and Broncos win. They're in. But the Ravens, Jaguars, and Bills were still alive. The Jets and Rams play OT. While the Saints, Panthers, and Vikings futures hang in the balance. The NFC West title still up for grabs. It lead to be the Seahawks or Rams. And of the big guns. Who played and for how long? Confused? Don't worry. We'll spell out everything next on NFL Prime Time. NFL Time is presented by Miller Lite. Prime Time is Miller Time. And now, here's your host, Chris Berman. Hello once again, everybody. Happy New Year from everybody here at ESPN to all of you. Chris Berman, Tom Jackson, Week 17, who to play, who now. I mean, not our usual wild final Sunday of the season, but yet some drama. Well, we've had some great Week 17s. We had a couple of spots still open for the playoffs. We found out who was going to fill them, but just not the way we usually get them filled. Well, we're going to explain everything to you, but let's start with some of the games just as teams are trying to finish up with a win off the charts. The Lions are at the Titans. Joey Harrington... And coming on a little bit lately, but Keith Bullock, come on here. This is what we call the hat trick, Tom. The sack, the strip, the recovery, the touchdown for the Pro Bowl linebacker Keith Bullock, Tennessee. Yeah, yeah, hat trick, triple play, whatever you want to call it. He rushes in, great job of stripping the ball, recovering the fumble, breaking away from a tackle, gets a good block there, gets to the end zone. Billy Volick in place of Steve McNair has certainly thrown for big yards. A lot to this man, Drew Bennett. 14-10, the Titans lead a new math being done in Tennessee. Lions are down 24-19, fourth and three under a minute to go. Joey Harrington and Donnie Nicky will knock it away. And in the end, it was Tennessee getting a win. They hadn't had any in a while. They beat the Lions 24-19, who showed some signs. Jones is going to be a nice runner. Harrington threw for 346, but neither team certainly having the type of season they were hoping for. No, and I think these are the two teams, though, that when we look next year, we see better seasons for both of these teams next season. And at least Detroit learned how to win on the road, although not today. They'll be better. Browns and the Texans. And the Texans were a team that really knocked Jacksonville off their keister. Meanwhile, Dom Capers say, okay, well, we did that. Now let's try to finish 500. But Alvin McKinley delivers a big sack on David Carr in Cleveland. If Cleveland, at least for Terry Robisky here at the end, playing hard, they sacked the car six times. Carr can move for a big guy, too. The whole team's after him. Yeah, you watch him run here. He has a tremendous courage. You know, he runs downfield. He very seldom slides. He's going to get what he can. Superior athlete in this game playing quarterback. He needs a lawnmower, though, after the play. Meanwhile, Dominic Davis is in. He had 103 yards. It's 22-14 Cleveland. So here we are, a minute and a half to go. The onside kick. And the good hands team all day long on these onside yes, kicks yes. and all the games you'll see had it going. And so Carr and the Texans do not get the 500. Cleveland wins it 22 to 14. They snap their nine game losing streak. 131 yards rushing for Lee Suggs. When we continue, week 17. Uh, Donovan McNabb and the Eagles. Well, he wasn't playing which Eagles played and could they look better than they did Monday night. And a wild AFC picture. The Bills had to win. The Jets thought they had to win. Jacksonville trying to stay alive. We'll outline it all for you when we return. Broncos do.
Your choice for a variety of great sports action every day is ESPN. NFL Primetime, presented by Miller Lite. Grab yourself a great-tasting, low-carb Miller Lite. And here we go, the 49ers already on the clock, and Tom Brady and the Patriots. Tom Brady grew up rooting for the 49ers in the Bay Area. And look at this, Ken Dorsey to Steve Bush, and the Niners lead the Patriots in Foxborough 7-0. First time in 20 regular season games or 23 games, including playoffs. The Pats did not score first, and it happens against the woe-be-gone 49ers, then Tom Brady in the red zone. Well, look, look at Brady. He reads the coverage. The corner is off. He throws the dump to Deion Branch. David Patton gets the block for him. That's perfect execution of a play down in the red zone. Very difficult execution of a play by the world champion Patriots. Brady with a quarterback sneak on fourth and two in the third quarter. Now, Brady played, you know, two and a half quarters. Rohan Davey came in late in the third drive, continues fourth quarter. Corey Dillon a touchdown. And the Patriots spotting the Niners the 7-0 lead. A workmanlike in which most of their regulars played into the third quarter. The Patriots win 21-7. Uh, Teddy Bruschi, by the way, 15 tackles in this mm. game. <laughs> Dillon ran for 1,635 yards this year at a buck 16 today. The Patriots, who finished 14-2, have won 29 of their last year. Yeah, and we'll, we'll talk a little bit more about this later on. But I, this, this team handled the warm-up for the playoffs, I think, the way you should. And at 2-14, and 14, the 49ers have tied for the worst record in France franchise history. Meanwhile, the Eagles, you saw them Monday night against the Rams as they played their JV. And what would they do? Well, first of all, everybody in Philadelphia or across America, but Philly where he was beloved, Reggie White, thinking about Re the, the late Reggie White, 92 decals on their helmets and a moment of silence. Now, Donovan McNabb and many other regulars did not play. Coy Detmer played and when well, the Eagles couldn't block like they couldn't block for them on Monday night, a day to forget. Justin Smith nails him there. Then Detmer intentionally grounding in the third quarter. I mean, already they're down 17-3. And even when the Eagles were threatening, Detmer, that's a nice play by Delta O'Neal. Bengals wanted Absolutely. to get the 500, Tom. And Detmer picked up twice, and then Jeff Blake came in and threw an interception together right away on the first play. I mean, it was brutal. Roderick Hood, what was the day like for Philly? That's a fumble, and the Bengals get it. Five Eagle turnovers on this day. Rudy, Rudy, Rudy Johnson broke Corey Dillon's franchise record for most yards in a season 1,435. He had 99 today. And so McNabb and Westbrook and Kurtz and Dawkins and Lido Shuffle Shepard sat out. And the Eagles were lambasted 38 10. Hooray for the Bengals. Two straight years, 500 at least yes. for Marvin Lewis. And something that we should point out, you pointed out to earlier uh, this morning on Countdown, we'll reiterate, only two teams have made the Super Bowl losing their last Absolutely. two regular season games. The 67 Packers, the Lombardi's Packers, who won it, 72 skins did not. Odd predicament for Philadelphia. That's correct. And they still have home field no matter what. Should they be concerned going into the playoffs? In your I, I think they have to be concerned, but I certainly understand that predicament that you're talking about for head coach Andy Reid. You lose T.O. You cannot afford to lose Brian Westbrook. You can't afford to lose Donovan McNabb. You can't afford to lose any of the other major players on your offense or defense, so you have to suffer through these two games. But I think in terms of the psyche and the mentality of the Philadelphia Eagles, we're not going to know where they are until a couple of weeks down the road. We've seen them now against the Dallas Cowboys boys in that fourth quarter without the whole second uh, half yes yeah. uh, against the Rams and now against the Bengals and they don't look like a team ready to play but we're not looking at the guys who are going to be doing the damage only a touchdown in each of those instances in those games and McNabb led them to two of the three they knew this was coming they, they would hope Absolutely. to get out of it with a win but they you're right can't worry about it. It, it they will have two weeks they will be ready but they're going we'll to find out we'll, we'll find we'll all find out going. together Philadelphia is still the top seed, but not ending the regular season. 13 and 1 ends up at 13 and 3. Brett Favre, would he play against the Bears? Actually, the Bears had a chance to sweep the pack for the first time since 91, but Brett and the pack had other ideas. Now, Jets, Rams affecting playoffs in both conferences. It was so big, they went a fifth quarter. <laughs> Thank you. 
Out of the shotgun, Garage throw, short throw. It's Troy Edwards breaking a tackle. And Edwards fighting his way. He lost the ball. It popped into the hands. It looked like Antoine Peake along that sideline. And Peake stays on his feet, diving for the end zone. And denied at the summit by Josh Smith. Oh, that was a heavenly block for this 19-year-old Atlanta Hawk. And Manning. He's got it. Manning's got the record. Peyton Manning has captured a piece of NFL history. Welcome back to NFL Primetime. Presented by Miller Lite. Packers and the Bears. Way back in September, the Pack lost to the Bears. And yes, as in Philly and around the number 92, will the decal on the Packers helmet as well for the late, great Reggie White. Far to Bubba Franks. Every time we're inside the red zone, it, Bubba Franks. They're just excellent at this <laughs> 17 yards. So Brett played a couple series, and wouldn't you know, a couple of touchdown passes to his fine fullback, William Henderson. Nobody there. 30 TD passes again this year. Brett Favre, 14-7, the Packers. Chad Hutchinson looked good that one game, Tom, but the last month, three. Darren Sharper could go all the way. 21-7, back, 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 back. And now, what you all were waiting for, far sidelines, Craig Knoll from Northwestern State of Louisiana. Knoll to Javon Walker, but he's hit hard. The coach's decision not return, and you can understand that. So Mike Sherman, again, one of the many coaches that had to decide, okay, who do I keep in, who do I not? There's no easy answer. There's no, quote, correct answer. But I tell you what, unlike some of the other teams resting their players, the Packers won big. Packers the, won a football. The oldest rivalry in football, 31 to 14. So Green Bay uh, finishes 10 and 6, and of course, already champs of the Norris Division. Far 9 of 13 for 196. And um, he's won 21 of 26. Pretty good day for Favre, huh? Yeah, <laughs> like in for a quarter. <laughs> Bucks, Cardinals. We don't know yet. Emmett's going to think about it. Could this be the last game of his career? We hope not. We hope he does what he wants to do. Chris Sims starting for Tampa Bay. And one of the fine rookie receiving seasons in the history of the league turned in by this man, Michael Clayton. 75 yards. Woo! Wow. 7-6 bucks in Arizona. Cards have kicked a field goal to go up 9-7. And Emmett... There you go. Make the first guy miss, Emmitt Smith. And that would set up Neil Rackers, who tries to rack up another field goal. Emmett, 23 for 69 today. Meanwhile, Chris Sims picked off by Adrian Wilson. And so four field goals, look, wasn't pretty. But the Bucks, you know, go out. They get carried out of this season. They just did it. A bad, bad season and a bad finish for the Bucks. 5-11, Arizona showed some glimpses in year one under Denny Green. They're 6-10. Emmett Smith, 937 yards this season. If you're counting at home, 18-3-55. Arizona at least yeah. a step in the right direction. Arizona took a step in the right direction. I remember from last year, Tampa Bay saying we can't let this happen again. Exactly what has happened again. It did. They're going to have to go back to the drawing board. The coaches said as much, John Gruden. When we return, Chad Pennington. The Jets win, and they're in in St. Louis. Herm Edwards figuring, well, time to rev up the offense after last week's dud against New England and Buffalo. Playoff atmosphere there. The Bills have won six in a row. But, oh, by the way, they're playing a team who had won 13 in a row, Pittsburgh. Visa Skycam will give you a glimpse of Eli Manning, the final game of the year. It's the Giants at home against... Old friend Bill Parcells in the Dallas Cowboys NFC East football, Sunday Night Football, bottom of the hour. A playoff atmosphere in Buffalo. They hadn't circled the wagons like this or had enthusiasm throughout the city uh, since the late 90s. Problem. Even though the Bills were hoping to win their seventh in a row, A, it didn't guarantee in playoffs, and B, they're playing a team in the Pittsburgh Steelers who came to town 14 and 1. And obviously, their JV is still pretty darn good. You knew it would be a head knocker between the teams from Western New York and Western Pennsylvania. Drew Bledsoe trying to warm up. 
And I tell you who has, my goodness, now you see why Tom Donahoe yes. gambled a year, you know, with the draft. Willis McGahey, does he run hard or what, Tom? Three-yard touchdown, seven three bills. It's a feverish pitch in Buffalo. Tommy Maddox, his first start since week two. Antoine Randall L caught seven today. Boy, they have skill and, players. And I think we saw the playbook open up a little bit because Tommy Maddox really is able to carry the whole playbook in terms of execution of game plan. Maddox picked up by a guy who should have been in the Pro Bowl, Nate Clements. Oh, my darling, it's Clements time. <laughs> Touchdown, Buffalo. 17-16 Bills. Third quarter. Now, later in the third quarter, McGahee. What's whoa, Ike Taylor, get out of here. That's an old-fashioned <laughs> stiff arm. 16 yards on the play. Crowd going nuts. After Bill's penalty forces a field goal attempt, Brian Lindell. He's had a good year, but when they need him, I don't want to say it. Wide right. Don't say it. <laughs> Missed from 28 yards. Under two minutes left, third quarter. Okay, no bus, but we got a rookie running back to Pittsburgh, Willie Parker. The big fella from North Carolina, 19 carries. He had 102 yards. Sets up a field goal by Reed, 19-17. Pittsburgh. Same score, and watch Richard Copley, number 21, bop, boom! The corner blitz, James Hardy, har har Harrison, touchdown! Defense, they've got depth everywhere, and the defense makes the play, 26-17, yeah. Pittsburgh. Watch the guys come off the edge, it's Russell Stevens and Cole Claw, and here, they, and here they come, and once the ball pops out, you get the nice recovery, easy jog into the end zone, it's not the hat trick, but it's a double play. I picked it off and I took it in. On fourth and one, the Steelers activated their third quarterback, Brian St. Pierre. Sacre bleu. He gains two yards in first down. <laughs> and Pittsburgh, you know, this is what they do. They held the ball for nine minutes, setting up a field goal, 29-17. Two minutes to go. Bledsoe. Talk about a fine rookie receiver. How about Lee Evans? Fist in the air. 55-yard completion. Same drive, but the Bills need two scores. McGahee. 18 carries, 79 yards, two touchdowns, 29-24. Just over a minute to go, onside kick. But remember the guy that was stiff-armed? This time, he gets revenge. That's yes. Ike Taylor falling on the ball, and the Pittsburgh Steelers have done it again. The Bills see their playoff chances slip away. An 0-4 start. They were trying to become only the second team to make the playoffs after an 0-4 start. And they remember at least what games like this were like. And maybe they can have a lot more of them next year. They finish 9-7. The Pittsburgh Steelers at 15-1. Just the fourth team ever to do that. And only the 72 Miami Dolphins won 14 straight regular season games, as the Pittsburgh Steelers have done. We'll talk about more of them in a minute, because what a job they did coming to play in a quote game that didn't mean anything for them. Well, this game, the Jets-Rams, meant a lot to both teams. The Jets knew for the second straight week, if they win, they're in. And it'll be one of the very few times, if they won, that that franchise had seen a team win 11 games. It'll be only the fourth time for a franchise been around since 1960. For the Rams, you scratch your head, but here they were on the final Sunday at 7 and 8 with a chance at A playoffs, B division. Here's our prime cut. Rams play better at home, as you know that. Chad Pennington questions what kind of offense could they run. A couple weeks ago against Seattle, the team the Rams were playing against in the NFC West, the Jets look great. But against the Patriots, nothing doing. Meanwhile, Mark Bolger. Da -da 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 -da. I hope the flag is the other way. It was. Touchdown to Isaac Bruce. 7-3 St. Louis. Wayne Corbett suffered a concussion. So maybe in his final game, well, we'll see. And for the Jets, uh, he's out. Chris Baker takes the swing pass from Pennington. 10-7. J-E-T. -T 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 -T. Under two minutes to go in the half. Rams deep. But Eric Coleman, the rookie free safety, he's going to be a good one, Tom. Picks off Bolger at the one. Herm Edwards appreciates the effort. Three and out Jets. Rams first play next drive. And look at this. The bomb to Torrey Holt touchdown. Looked like he yeah, could have it, coverage. Great play, but only three-man rush, and they didn't get any, any pressure on Mark Bolger. And it looks like the safety had a play, but just was late getting the hand up. 40-10 Rams at the half. Steven Jackson, the rookie running back. 20-yard touchdown. He's ahead, 21-10 of the Rams. John Abraham, again, the fine defensive end. Jets had to sit it out. But the play that might have turned it around for the Jets, Jericho Cotchery in the rye. Could go all the way. B.J. Askew, a great block on Wilkins there. 
and the sideline of the Jets say, we're back in this, and indeed, they are. 21-20, now, Bolger, pass tip, Sean Ellis, Vilma, would you go out and walk, Dino? I need a Brontosaurus burger. Jonathan Vilma, rookie, touchdown, 38 yards. 26-21, they go for two, don't get it. Now, can the Rams come back? Five minutes left. Bolger, Torrey Holt. This is the way it was supposed mm -hmm, to be all year mm -hmm. for the Rams. 27-26, St. Louis. They go for two. Steven Jackson, left side. Bang, in. 29-26, St. Louis. Here come the Jets. Third and six, two minutes to go. Third to 32. Curtis, my favorite, Martin, had a big day. 153 yards rushing past the idol Jerome Bettis and Eric Dickerson. Now he's fourth all time on the rushing list. Pennington, oh, Adam Archuleta could have sealed the deal. Mike Martz knows it. They know it, and with six seconds to go, trailing three. Jets get second life, actually third life. There were two Ram plays. Doug Fry and Good were tied at 29, and the Rams can't bear to look. They're going to overtime. 53 yards, Brian for the win, and life of Brian, no good. And the Rams, each team had the ball twice in the OT. Dead, Mark Bolger. A swing pass to Steven Jackson, if I only had a first down. All the way down to the 13-yard line. Then, Jeff Wilkins, 31-yard field goal. Good. It's good. It's good. And the Rams win it. 32-29. And by the time this game was over, late in the fifth quarter, if you will, the Rams knew that they were in playoff business. They didn't know as the game was going on. They needed to win and hope. The Jets found out during the fifth quarter that they either way would be in playoff business. Although when they started out, a loss could have dealt them a huge blow. So St. Louis and the Jets, playoff bound. St. Louis wins the game as Mark Bolger threw for 450 yards. And we'll get back to the Jets a little bit later as we set up the opening round and back to the Rams a little bit later. But uh, let's talk the AFC, the, the big picture. We saw New England earlier, Tom, and we just saw right. Pittsburgh That's against right. Buffalo in a playoff atmosphere. How about the way these two teams approach the day? Very impressed with the two top Very seeds in the impressed. AFC. You know, the, and I think that Coach Belichick really gets the nod here when it comes to playing Tom Brady, two-time Super Bowl MVP, kept him in the game for almost three-quarters of football, as he did most of his starters. He wants them to be sharp going into the playoffs. Same thing for Coach Cowher, I think, with the exception of his quarterback and the bus, both nicked up a little bit. I've always said, if you're hurt and you can't play, then don't play. But both of those teams play to win the football games. They want to go into the playoffs, and they want to go in sharp. And not only with Pittsburgh play to win, you knew it was going to be a physical, physical game. Absolutely. situation Absolutely. And, and not a beautiful day outside. That's right. It wasn't Absolutely. freezing cold. And you, you, don't, you don't go 15-1 and one by accident. Yeah, yeah. 84 Niners, 85 Bears of Coach Ditka, 98 Vikes who didn't get to the Super Bowl, the first who did win the Super Bowl, and now the Pittsburgh Steelers. 14 in a row. 14 in a row and a well-deserved <laughs> week off. Very, very impressive. Meanwhile, the Atlanta Falcons already in his second seed, but now the Seattle Seahawks, after they kicked off, found out that the Rams had won. So the Seahawks now had to win. They're already in the playoffs to win to win the NFC West and get a home game. And so here we go. From Seattle, Michael Vick didn't play last week. He's going to start for the Atlanta Falcons. Meanwhile, Sean Alexander rushing, title up for grabs, began the day with a big lead, but they saw that Curtis Martin had a huge game. And so we're tied at seven. That's 20 touchdowns. Alexander Vick hit fumble. And at this moment, oh my goodness, he got hit. He was ginger. Turned out to be okay, but you don't tell me everybody in Atlanta was I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, holding I'm your breath. Vic still third and ten. His second quarter, he's in and makes the one play, but now all of a sudden, what? And he his own guy <laughs> and two Seahawks that drive by the way gets a field goal 10 7 and that's enough after the field goal Vic is done for the day Matt Hasselbeck didn't play last week D'Angelo Hall number one pick could go all the way so Seattle who needs to win to get a home game now trails 17 7 they've scored a touchdown to make it 17 14 first and goal in the third quarter Hasselbeck tight end Jeremy Stevens Seahawks, come on, Seattle, let's go. They have the lead 21-17, 21-20. Sean Alexander. 
Bang! It's a tough run. Running hard. Tom. 11 yards. He loses his shoe on the run. Shortly after, second and goal. He needs one yard to tie Curtis Martin for the rushing title. But, you know, they need a touchdown. Hasselbeck gets the sneak. So they go ahead 28-20. And sure enough, wouldn't get a chance again. Matt Schaub, seconds to go. Stump the Schaub. Swing to Fred McCrary. First down. Third and goal. Last play of the game. Schaub. Touchdown, Brian Finneran. Seattle can't hold him. And now it's 28-26. A two-point conversion. And we go to overtime. Inside handoff to Warwick Dunn. Just an, odd, just an odd play. But this is the this is the area of the field where most times the Falcons depend on Mike Vick to somehow get it in. And so the Seattle Seahawks exhale now. <laughs> they win the NFC West. They finish at nine and seven. They're the champs. St. Louis goes to the playoffs as a wild card team. They'll play each other. We'll set up the playoffs for you. 28 to 26. The Seahawks win. And that one yard is the difference in the rushing title. Alexander ends up with 1,696. That's ahead of Corey Dillon, 1,635, who was third. But Curtis Martin, 1,697, the oldest rushing champion, 31 years and eight months since Marion Motley in 1950. That would be going back away. Congratulations to Seattle. They're in as the champs. And Baltimore. They were hoping for a couple losses by Denver and by Jacksonville. Meanwhile, the New Orleans Saints, no one gave them a chance against Red Hot Carolina. Could they win and could they get in? Vinny Testaverde, the Dallas Cowboys at the Meadowlands to play the New York football Giants. Sunday Night Football, the final game of the year. You'll want to watch it after NFL Pratt. Yeah. Welcome back to NFL Primetime, presented by Miller Lite. How about the season turned in by the San Diego Superchargers and Marty Schottenheimer. First draft pick last year won four games. They're trying to win their 12th. Playing red hot Kansas City. Drew Brees, LaDainian Tomlinson sitting. But Doug Flutie, 42 years young, all reliable, still very good to Kasim Osgood. And then Flutie takes it himself. How about the Chargers leading 10 to 3? Still second quarter. Flutie to Ryan Kraus. Krause, who had another catch where he carried the whole Chiefs on his back. Dougie Flutie. Doug Flutie. It, you know what? They're in pretty good hands if something happens to Brees. Meanwhile, Phillip Rivers starts his second half. And, you know, it's his first real action except for a couple of handoffs. It's a fumble. Rivers to Malcolm Floyd. Hey! Hey! Rivers throws a touchdown. 24-3 Chargers. Chiefs, we know, can come back. Trent Green, Tony Gonzalez, 97th catch. That's a new tight end record, breaking the old mark set by Ben Winter Coates 10 years ago with the Patriots. Gonzalez ends up with 102, but Doug Flutie throwing for 199, rushing for 25. Tom, the Chargers are 12 and four and proud champs of the- Fantastic season for Marty Schottenheimer. And now we go to the playoff questions unanswered in the AFC. And we'll kind of go in order of who needs the most help. The Baltimore Ravens uh, had a tough December, and so they needed what we call a swamp-like series of events. But first things first, could the Ravens win at home against the suddenly pretty good Miami Dolphins, who won four games all year, but two of them last week? Ray Lewis sitting, broken right wrist. Sage Rosenfels, Parsley, Sage, Rosemary, and what a time on your first pass of the day in your first start to Chris Chambers. Are you kidding me? 76 yards, the Dolphins lead 7-0. Jared Johnson, though, inter oh, intercepts the pass by Rosenfels. Ravens lead 17-7. Another field goal, Ravens lead 20-7, Jamal Lewis. It's going to be a thousand. It's hard to get to it for him, but he had a thousand yard season, 167 today, 27 7. The Ravens. One of our favorite stories this year is young Wes Welker for Miami. Looking to make the move, and he could go all the way. Look at him outrun the four Ravens. Remember, he was the young man against New England. The kick, an extra point, kick the field goal, return punts, right. return the, the kickoffs. Meanwhile, fumble Jamal Lewis in the end zone. Ooh, Miami with the safety, and all of a sudden, they're within a touchdown, 30-23. to 23. 
And Terrell Suggs gets by two to. Oh. He can play now. It's not like uh, Ray Lewis, the only defensive player on that team. And so a higher scoring game, you might have seen Miami played well for Bates. You gotta give him right. credit. And they'll have a new coach in Nick Shaven. Bates certainly helped his resume, but the Baltimore Ravens finished nine and seven. They want help, and they won by the count of 30 to 23. Now, the Jags and the Raiders. So Baltimore had to hope that one of the teams losing later on would be Jacksonville. They're at the Raiders. Jacksonville had matters in their own hands a week ago, but they fell to Houston. Now they got to beat the Raiders, and they need help. Ernest Wilford, remember he caught the last second pass in Buffalo week one, and that's a big catch from Byron Leftwich. Greg Jones, touchdown, 13-6 in the third quarter. Jags lead their A8. Dead. Third and goal, Raiders under five minutes to go. Zach Crockett, he's tough inside the five, Tom. Flag on the play, leg whip penalty, Raiders. We saw a couple of those today, a couple yeah, of leg did. whips. Uh, Pittsburgh had a trip, That's right? correct. Two minutes for tripping. Kerry Collins to Donovan Darius, but the problem is wrong team. Picked off by Jacksonville. Then Collins with his team down by seven. Incomplete pass interference called on Dwayne Washington. So here are the Raiders. Zach Crockett. Nope. Couple yards. Kerry Collins second down. Play action. Good pursuit. Jacksonville tipped away. Third and goal. Zach King of the Wild Frontier. Crockett. No gain. And fourth goal. Fourth and goal. Fumble. Kerry Collins fumbled. And the Jags. Hey. Now that essentially, that would knock Baltimore out if you're following me. The Jags need help, but they win it by the count of 13 to six. And so it wasn't pretty, but Jacksonville, you know what? All in all, they gotta be pretty pleased with their season. Absolutely, nine and seven. They, uh, you know, played great for Jack Del Rio all year, took some strides forward. Tough conference, tough conference to get in. And so the Jaguars now would hope that Peyton Manning would play some for Tony Dungy, and the Denver Broncos would fall at home. Peyton Manning began the game with a short pass to Marvin Harrison, paid one of two six yards, only played one drive. Reason, rookie Jim Sorge, just in case. Tony wanted him to play with the first team line, with the first team everybody else. Here is Sorge to Harrison for a first down. Sorge to Harrison. Anybody can do it, see? <laughs> 50 a touchdown pass by the Colts. Peyton had the first 49. Sorge, 7 of 7 on the drive. Jake Plummer, bootleg to Ashley Lalee. Oh, that's pretty. And look at Lalee in the end zone. They're tied at 7. He's doing, he, you know, played ball at Hawaii. He knows how to swim. Crazy play later in the first. Sorge to Dallas Clark. Boom, nailed. By John Lynch, Reggie Wayne picks it up. Wayne, Fabo, Kelly Herndon picks it up. Flag down, but the play continues. Look at the return by Herndon. What? And then, what? And then gets a block, and then he could go all the way. Tony Dungy challenged it. He usually doesn't win him. Yeah, but when we, we, we saw this initially, you saw Clark bobbling the ball a little bit. He was hit by Lynch when he hit the ground was not able to make a football move. It was called dead on that spot. Tony won a challenge. And then Lynch, you know, such a tough player, may be hearing from the league later. But at any rate, Dungy won the challenge. Meanwhile, Plummer to Patrick Hape. It's a touch on the Broncos lead, 17-7. Sorge, Reggie Wayne. Stately Wayne Manor out of the bat game. Touchdown, 17-14. So, see, Sorge has two. And it's 17-14. <laughs> Kennedy, Kenoy Kennedy beaten there, but Jake Plummer, this is what he can do. And this is why Mike Shanahan says, hey, he can do these things. That's a great play. Plummer dives, pylon, touchdown, 27-14. And you know what? They're so, you know what those guys are saying? Mike, Tony, good to see you. We'll see you next week. <laughs> like last year when they played like last late year. in the yep. season, but not the last game of the season. They're going to play next week in Indianapolis. The Broncos with the win. Congratulations to Mike Shanahan and company. They make the playoffs at 10 and 6. So that closes the door. AFC playoffs, take out your pen. Saturday on ABC, it'll be the late game for ABC. Jets at 
San Diego. They played in week two. Chargers weren't them yet. The Jets won the game. Denver at Indianapolis. Now, last year in this very spot, the Colts smoked them. That's right. Uh, and, and so we'll see if things have changed this year. So that is the AFC plan. And, of course, the you know New England is two and Pittsburgh is one, and they get the bye. So pretty loaded bracket, as we've known well, for a while. Well, we're, we're looking at six teams, all with double-digit wins, and four of those teams with 12 wins or more. So I'm looking forward to the AFC playoffs. I think it's going to be great. A uh, lot of familiarity when it comes to these teams playing, especially, you know, teams like the Broncos going back to play the Colts. You almost feel like they're division co uh, opponents because they see each other so often. Uh, it's going to be very interesting. And it's going to be very – and the number one and two seeds – Probably the best two teams in football. Yep, absolutely. And the Jets get their second life. And they, they lose, but they're in. But they won 10 games. You know, they, they won 10 games. But San Diego, don't overlook them. They, no, no. They, they, good defense. They've opened up good a lot of... Good defense as well. They rested a lot of guys and played very good defense against the Chiefs today. AFC playoffs loaded. When we come back, we'll give you the NFC situation. And I don't want to use the term humorous, but maybe I should. The NFC playoff situation. The Vikes trying to get in. Carolina and the, and the Saints DeLome against Brooks in kind of a elimination game. Who would know that both would be in that mode? ESPN Sport Legends presents Billie Jean King. For all of Billie Jean King's tennis success, one match towers above all the rest. Her battle of the sexes duel against Bobby Riggs in 1973. It pitted man versus woman. It, it was boss versus secretary. It was husband versus wife. It was brother versus sister. There was never anything before like Billie Jean King and Bobby Riggs, and there never will be again. Before a record courtside crowd of 30,000 at the Houston Astrodome and a worldwide television audience estimated at almost 50 million, King took charge of her aging opponent, running him into submission. That particular you know, night, it became a level playing field, and I think that that changed the way women thought. Simply the finest football on the planet. The top clubs, the elite players, in a quest for the ultimate prize of European football. The UEFA Champions League on ESPN. The classic teams, the classic moments, the classic rivalries. Join us as we relive the most historically renowned matches in the history of the game. The history of cricket continues with the classic matches. Wednesday on ESPN. This week on ESPN, we take to the great outdoors. Inside the Numbers. Brought to you by Visa, proud sponsor of the NFL. Get ready for the game. And now we go to the NFC playoff openings, and one involved the Minnesota Vikings, who at 8-7 and seven knew that if they won, they would be in. But they went through this last year at Arizona. They seem to go through this all the time. And they're at Washington, a team long eliminated, but with a tough defense. So here we go to FedEx Field, where you positively, absolutely have to get there overnight. And that was the Vikings. But right away, talk about overnight. How about the first play of the game? Antonio Brown, kick return. These are the Vikings in a key game, giving up a big 66-yard return. It, it set the tone for the rest of the football game. Patrick Ramsey to Chris Cooley. Cooley quietly had a nice second half of the season. 7-0 Redskins. Early second quarter, Michael Bennett, two yards. Second and goal, Dante Culpepper. And with the pressure by Ronaldo winning Cornelius Griffin, Incomplete, but roughing the passer call. Roughing the passer is a touchy call. Let the quarterback play football. And so first and goal for the Vikes. Mo Williams down to the two. Second and goal. Mo, why are you on it? Down to the one. Third and goal. Meanwhile, incomplete. Cole Pepper. Guess what? A field goal. All those plays, and they get a field goal. 
Now in the third, Culpepper to Randy Moss. And Woo. he can make these catches yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. Take another look at it. Look at him get position. He's had maybe the best set of hands in the history of this game, except for the guy he played with, Chris Carter. <laughs> 14 to 10. Culpepper scrambles to Randy Moss. Now look at this. This is his own tip drill. Boop. And then boop, makes the catch, and he's gone. Then a move, too, but these are the Vikings. Crunch time, holding play call back Adam yeah. Goldberg. Watch Adam Gold Goldberg. We have him spot shadowed right there. You're going to get that call almost every time, even though you put the arms out like you didn't do anything at the end. <laughs> Later in the fourth quarter, it's Ramsey to Taylor Jacobs, and he'll take it down to the one, setting up a touchdown, 21-10. And so the Vikes need two scores very late. Culpepper to Nate Burleson. Oh! Oh! Closing seconds. Culpepper. They're down 11 still. You talk about a miracle. What do you do if you're Washington? Knock it down! With Marcus Cuckoo Kachu Robinson catches it. They make a two point conversion 21 18. Now look, what? Randy Moss is walking off the field. I know the odds are slim, if at all. So you got to get the onside kick, start lateraling it, kick a field goal. The Moss is gone. The Vikings, at this moment, are gone. Mike Tice sees the mark fall to 8 8. And the Redskins, trying to be that number one defense overall in football, beat the Vikings 21 to 18. Betts had under 18 yards. Oh, by the way, the two touchdown passes, Culpepper, give him 39, fifth best Great single year. season total Great year. of all time. And so the Vikings, at this moment, out. But there are other ways for them to get in. Saints and Panthers both at seven and eight. Now, Moussa Muhammad, second half of the year, has been unbelievable. Made a great catch in the first quarter. Look at this in the third. Wow! Wow! And that pulls Carolina, who's down at home 14-3, to within 14-10 of the suddenly just as hot New Orleans Saints. Later third quarter, Aaron Brooks said, hey, I'm a great quarterback with an inconsistent team. To Joe, don't bother me right now. I'm on the horn. 44-yard touchdown. He was comparing himself to Jake DeLone, but you know what? He backed it up on this yes, day. Yeah, he absolutely. He thrilled him this absolutely. morning, Tom, but he backed it up today. Meanwhile, Will Smith, men in black, forces DeLone to fumble it there, and Aaron recovers. Saints put pressure today. That pressure came from four man fr from a four-man front. But here are the Saints. They're up at seven and a half minutes to go, 21-10, and normally reliable John Carney misses for Jim Haslett. Then, Jalom to Moussa Muhammad. Here we go. Nine-yard touchdown, 21-16. to They go for two. Jalom, daylight come. You got it, Jalom. To Mike Aluminum Seidman. Touchdown. Excuse me. Two-point conversion, 21-18. Saints trying to ice it. Brooks to Ernie Conwell. Short of a first down. He goes out of bounds. Stops the clock. The foot goes out. Oh, no, they're trying to run mm, it out. Mm, yep. So the Saints punt. Mitch Berger hams it. And it's a big play at this stage of the game with a minute to go. Down to the two-yard line. So the Panthers, they just need a field goal, but they got a long way to go. So no timeouts. To low. To Chris Mangum. The pitch to Nick Goings. The hook and lateral. 20 yards. Nice play. Now at their own 22, DeLone. Daylight coming. You're going to have Muhammad, the mountain, 16 yards of the 42. And, and, and you're seeing a continual play here. They didn't spike the ball. They ran another play. Ball. Tick, 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 tick. Yes, they're in Saints territory, but tick, 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 tick. And then even a, a long incompletion. And so. You got only one shot. It's a 60-yard field goal. John Casey at the foot. Forget it. Block. I mean, you got to kick it so low. Tony Bryant block. Jim Hazlitt's Saints. Jim Hazlitt's Saints went into Carolina, a team they'd lost to four in a row, a team that dusted them in their park a month ago, and they go in and win a huge game. The New Orleans Saints, Tom. They win it by the count of 21 to 18. And so, the problem is, once the Rams won, Saints, it didn't work for great them. Great effort, great effort. Had the Rams from, lost, great, they would have been in. Great effort from Jim Haslett and the Saints, though. And a nice run, but yeah. albeit too big a hole That's right. for Carolina. And so, the Rams and Vikings make the playoffs. Rams, Vikes, get in. They're 8-8. Eight eight. We showed you this on the Schwamm a couple weeks ago. 
They are now the sixth and seventh, eight and eight teams to make the playoffs. The first five, including a division winner for Marty Schottner for the 85 Browns, all lost their playoff game, so they would be the first if they did. Here are the NFC wild card now, okay? St. Louis at Seattle. St. Louis obviously swept Seattle this year. That's the ABC Saturday early game, pregame at 4 o'clock. The game is at 4.30. Minnesota at Green Bay. Green Bay beat him twice this year, 34-31, the second just last week on Christmas Eve. So that's the Sunday game, and obviously Philly and Atlanta have had 1-2 for a while so both of these rematches, rematches the good news for the teams involved was you're not going to have to look very deep to say oh god how do I now we prepare for these teams hard to tell what you're going to see i will tell you go to, ahead tom analyze well, i was just going to say it's number. very difficult to beat a team whether you're trying to do that three times during the course of a season seattle losing to the rams now you get to play them again at home we remember what they were doing to them at home minus the last four minutes of the football game Seattle could have had an entirely going different season I know you can't go back to it but you can call on what you did well up to that point you know what's interesting 15 times teams have swept in the regular season and they've met again in the playoffs mm -hmm. 10 of those 15 you can beat a team three Sorry, times. that's canceled what I said no no I mean you would think <laughs> 10 of the 15 it's three for three we're just giving you the facts we'll give you the predictions a little bit later when we return, prime time performers and a final word on the final Sunday. NFL Prime Time, presented by Miller Lite. Grab yourself a great tasting low carb Miller Lite.